G'day, and welcome to the Luthery Academy's course on building an Irish bazooki. I'm Graham MacDonald. I live in Canberra in Australia, and I've been building Irish bazookis and other mandolin family instruments for over 40 years. Over the next little while, we'll build one of these, an Irish bazooki, a big mandolin on steroids, a large flat top mandolin body with a guitar scale length neck. The good thing about building these is that they use almost exactly the same materials as you would for a small bodied guitar. And often Luthery suppliers will have smaller bits which are big enough for a guitar but which will work really well for a bazooki. Soundboard is spruce. It's flat, though arched to a 15 foot radius dome. And to counteract the pressure of the strings on a floating bridge and a tailpiece, I've developed what I call an H brace system, where two braces come from the tail block up under the bridge and either side of the sound hole to lock into the linings up here. There's also a transverse brace just in front of the bridge. And uh, all three of those braces are arched to a 15 foot radius and reinforced with a carbon fiber epoxy composite, which makes a really strong yet lightweight soundboard structure. Soundboard spruce, and one of the joys of building a bazooki out of a standard guitar sized soundboard is you can normally get a flat back mandolin out of it as well as the bazooki. But we can't tell until we've actually got the whole thing joined up. The body uh, back and sides on this one and the one we're going to build are Australian blackwood, uh, perhaps better known in America these days as black acacia, and it's an acacia in the same family as koa. In fact, very similar in appearance and weight and uh, behaviour to acacia koa. This is acacia melanoxylon. Two pieces for the back. Two, piece, two, two sides, which are about 60 centimetres or two foot long and 80 millimetres or three and a quarter inches wide. Uh, apologies for I'm using metric, but we turned metric many years ago. It makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways to work in metric rather than fractions of an inch. But I do tend to flip backwards and forwards between the two. Uh, I still think of scale lengths in inches and I measure actions in 64th of an inch because it's almost the ideal uh, increment in which to work in that area. The neck on this is mahogany. We're using mahogany as well. Um, a fairly standard scarf joint head and a stacked heel out of a, this block of mahogany which will cut in half and blew up. The fretboard is rosewood. Uh, doesn't matter if you use ebony and we'll go through the processes of uh, laying out a fretboard and, and slotting it in a couple of different ways but it's possibly even just as easy to buy a pre-slotted fretboard from one of the suppliers if you're not set up with saws and stuff to do that accurately and it's got to be accurate. Um, underneath the fretboard is a double acting truss rod this one's from Allied Luthery. I like them because they're only 10 millimetres high, 6 millimetres wide, and they're very effective at keeping a long neck flat. Remember, bazooki, or at least the ones I build, join the body at the 17th fret rather than the 14th, as you might on a guitar. So you've got an extra 2 or 3 inches of bendable neck, and uh, a truss rod sitting in there um, will go a long way to making the whole thing much more stable and keep it playable. Uh, the neck on these is bolted on. Uh, what I do is overlap the sides to the width of the, the body. The plans will show that, uh, but it just means that uh, the neck can be removed quite simply and the neck joint is hidden um, under this uh, end binding on the body. I use M6 bolts with a threaded insert, two of those to hold the, uh, the neck in place, which makes it relatively simple, um, as long as you can get your hand in the sound hole with an Allen key to undo those bolts. That can get a bit tricky. We'll get up to uh, making the bridge and the tailpiece. We'll make a fairly simple tailpiece out of sheet brass and laminate up a 
uh, an adjustable bridge out of pieces of ebony or rosewood uh, will warn you that it's a dangerous activity building musical instruments. You've got very sharp blades, you're working with electricity and lots of chemicals, which will probably rot your kidneys and your liver if you don't uh, treat them carefully. So you've got to be careful, but it's great fun. It's the thing that you've got to absolutely concentrate on all the time. Uh, at the same time, using your hands in very fine ways. Building an instrument is an intensely satisfying thing to do. And over the next little while, we'll go through it step by step. Mm -hmm.